during our Farm Basics time, we're going to talk about the farmer's favorite topic of discussion, the weather. And you know, there is one weather condition that we as agronomists especially worry about, and we call it temperature inversions. If you're wondering what that is, we want to explain that today. Well, you make a joke out of it that farmer's favorite topic is weather. Uh, we were talking to one of the foremost climatologists in our country, Elwin Taylor from Iowa State University. He was saying his best students are always the farmers because all they do all week at home is talk about the weather with their folks. <laughs> hey, what's going on with the weather? Is this a good day for spraying, for example? Are the conditions fit? or may I run into some trouble? All right, well, here's the thing. Normally, the air is going to be warmer the closer you are to the ground. That's just naturally what happens. Go in a plane sometime, what happens? The temperature is always going down as you go up. With temperature inversions, this usually happens like right away in the morning, for example. You'll see that, hey, we actually have warmer air above that ground level air well, that's a temperature inversion. And what can happen is now nothing can move. I don't care if it's, uh, if it's spray drift or if it's smoke or anything, it can't get above that level where the temperature is actually warmer. So that causes real problems when you're out spraying something that may have volatilization, like 2,4-D, for example. 2,4-D, you can spray it on a crop, but then the next morning, it could actually pick up a little bit. Well, with a temperature inversion, it can't go way up in the air. If it goes way up in the air, it doesn't hurt anything. But if it goes up just a little ways, and then it moves laterally, and then it could drop down again, that's where we have real problems. I get a lot of questions about temperature inversions and, and why some chemical labels say, well, we'd like it to be between two or three mile an hour winds and 10 mile an hour winds. And people say, well, why don't I want it just dead calm? Well, then there's no wind to blow it out of my field. It'll just drop right here. But it's these inversions that we're really concerned about because if we have the inversions, again, like Brian said, even though there's not wind, uh, that product could move to the side and we really don't want to see that when we do have wind, it mixes the air better and the inversion goes away. So whenever we have a little bit of wind, we're not nearly as worried about a temperature inversion. Now, if you say, boy, I, I don't know when these things are happening. How am I supposed to be aware of this? If you just drive down the road almost any morning, especially like in the winter time, you can see this a lot. Let's say there's an ethanol plant that's just putting out steam. Everybody worries it's smoke. It's just steam. But let's say steam is going up in the air. What happens? It doesn't go straight up in the air. It goes up a little ways and then it goes horizontally. Well, that's a condition where we've got the temperature inversion. Well, this weather condition, a temperature inversion where we've got warm air and cold air, not in the right order. Instead of getting cold going up, there's actually a warm layer trapping a cold layer of air down. That's where we can run into some issues with spraying. And if you're out trying to catch our weed of the week, you may have to keep your eyes out for these types of inversions. We'll show you which products may be effective at controlling this weed coming up later in the show. <music> 